these days. So, um... So, journalist. So, I'm going to ask you some questions. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? Yeah, you have three minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, what did you think... What did you think when you very, very first read the script? Can you remember? Yeah. Because I met Darren... Uh, he came backstage at the show... And John had already, yeah, John had already worded and says, you know, he's got the fountain and it fell through and it's a great project and, uh, you know, so he had Darren come back and Darren was like, oh, I love the show, great, great, great. And I was very shocked, A, that he was there, seemed very incongruous that, that Darren Aronofsky was at The Boy From Oz and, and loving it. Really, he really enjoyed it. I could tell he really liked it. And I said, you go to music. Anyway, give me a very long answer. Anyway, yeah, he, he loves musicals. As loves it, and I was shocked. Yeah. And then he goes, uh, I said to him, so, so what are you doing next? He goes, oh, I don't know, you know. I said, we're going to get you a movie up and stuff. I said, yeah, I heard about it. Um, I'd love to read it. Could I read it? Yeah. And he goes, oh, I don't know. No, no, I don't really do that sort of thing. And I was like, really? Okay. <laughs> I kind of thought, oops, Is overstepped the mark. No, he kind of was just very shy and sheepish all of a sudden. I felt like I've been a real pushy actor here all of a sudden. And uh, anyway, he rang me the next day and he said, do you really want to read it? He rang me out. So anyway, do you really want to read it? I remember. And I said, yeah. So I got it and I read it after the show one night. So I get home about 11 and I read it straight through till about 1 in the morning. And I just had this... My main feeling of it, well, apart from being a little confused plot-wise, was I had this feeling of hope. Mm -hmm. Like, just felt very light. I couldn't put it, couldn't put it down, literally, which mm -hmm. is unusual for me. But usually, you know, You've tired, and I was like, yeah. well, no, I'm just tired. I'm reading at 11 o'clock at night, and I usually maybe get 20 minutes into something. So I read it straight through, which is always a good sign. And then I was, I just had this beautiful, I thought there's some message in here that really connects to me and there were little bits in the script that I really connected with and things I believed in and you know, I rang Darren the next morning and I said man I just look I don't want to be presumptuous in that you're going to ask me to do it or anything but I'll let you know that if you would want me to do it I'll commit to it now and I think, actually, I, yeah, I remember saying that and then thinking, shit, I should probably tell my agent I've even kind of read it, you know, before committing to it. Because he was, that, that was the issue. He was like, when are you finish the show? And I said, that's right. And I said, oh, September, I guess. I'm thinking of going in July. And, right. You know, I've waited years to do it, so. And also you needed to have some time off after the show. Yeah. And needed, we ended up having, I think, at least a couple of months. Yeah. So... And that was it. I, I, it happened so fast. And, and I just said to him, look, I'll guarantee you in writing that this is the thing I'll do afterwards because it was like January. So it was 11 months away for Darren. Right. Which is, uh, he'd already waited years. Right. But that was, yeah, that was the first thing I remember. I felt like it was somehow... And I'd funnily enough been reading Joseph Campbell and I felt like it was like a, a myth, like a modern-day myth. Mm -hmm that you don't necessarily, I couldn't necessarily disseminate the entire themes, etc., of the piece, but it just connected with me, it made sense. I felt like, yeah, this is what life's about. I think I've really connected with the uh, fear of death and, and actually fully dealing with death before you can live. Mm. Um, and... And the, the quote at the beginning from Genesis, which is something I'd kind of looked at before and always been very interested in, and that whole notion of duality and how our life on earth is going... All, much of our life has been getting away from the Garden of Eden mm. and that our embodiment here, human embodiment, is about getting back mm. to the Garden of Eden. So mm. the movie starting with that quote, I was like, whoa, this is, this is sort of weird. And then there's some hazy bits in the middle, but mm. that was my first reaction. Mm. I, I'm very... 
kind of <laughs> exhausted right now must be. in every way, but very satisfied at the same time, yeah. which is kind of a thrilling feeling. Have you, do you think you've ever been pushed as hard as... No way, I've never been pushed as hard. No. No. And... He's very unusual. What about you? Do you? I've, never, I've never been remotely pushed this far. No. I've been, pu- I think, and, well, I've definitely been pushed by people who push you in a way that makes you um, feel bad about yourself and yeah. shuts you down. That's Better. happened, but I've never been pushed by somebody who is holding you and making yeah. you feel completely safe, but pushes you to the point where you think you're going to actually lose your mind because it's you can't true. go any further. But Yeah, no, though, I'm in places in this film. I've, I've watched actors and heard actors talk about, mm. oh, I've gone, I went into a space during that film. And mm. So I was like, did you really, or are you just sort of just romanticising yeah. this whole thing? And, yeah, you know? being actor studio about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like... Have you done that, by the way? Yeah. yeah. It's, have you? No. <laughs> Four and a half hours. Is it? Oh. But. But you did. But on this, you felt. Yeah. At times, I felt really. I was also away from my family. Yeah. Which was kind of deliberate. Mm. 